In this video, I'm going to show you how to shoot this bottle of whiskey in three entirely different ways using artificial light from Gox. So here in the UK, due to COVID, we're on a full nation lockdown, which means I'm at home, homeschooling my two children. But I thought I would break the monotony of learning maths and English by challenging myself to do something I really don't enjoy more than maths and English. Now shooting bottles isn't something I particularly like and it's something I actively try and avoid. If I'm shooting for a client then so be it, but it's not something I would always choose to shoot. Now as part of my Christmas present my wife bought me a bottle of Haig Club whiskey which was delicious and I actually love the shape and the texture of the bottle. So I thought I would challenge myself this week to shoot three entirely different setups in three days using the lighting setup in my front living room. Now one of the extra challenges to this is I wanted to do it all on the longest lens I could to give me a bit more of a challenge so I'm shooting this on my 85mm Sigma Art. So it's given me an extra dimension of difficulty to make sure I can fit in the frame. Now I started this process as I always do with any shooter and doing a little bit of research to find the type of shots I wanted to use. And because I wanted to shoot three entirely different looks, I looked at different avenues, different advertising posters and used my tool, which I always use, Pinterest, to find some ideas. I knew when starting the series that I wanted to shoot one image in the style that I would generally shoot, which is a little bit dark and moody, using multiple lights and certainly using some colour gels. And that was the first setup I adopted. The second setup, I wanted to go for a much cleaner, almost cosmetic feel to the image, which is becoming much more popular with the likes of perfumes and aftershaves. And I wanted to try something a little bit different with this one and challenge myself again to create something entirely out of the look that I would usually shoot. And in the third setup, I knew I wanted to create something really colourful, really bright, as a total difference to the previous two images. And I wanted to incorporate the leaf filters, colour gels that I have as part of my pack to really give this image some punch. So I'm going to take you very quickly through these three different setups, how they were set up and how they were shot. So for the first of my three setups, which was actually the most challenging, which I wasn't quite expecting before I started setting this up, I used four different light sources on this one. Now I started by building this setup, as you can see from the images, one shot at a time. And I started doing this with less props before adding more for the finished shot. Now the sort of look I wanted to get for this was quite dark, quite moody, quite understated, but it makes sure I still got a lot of warmth coming in from the gel in the back of the frame. Now as you can see from the right hand side of the image as we look at it, the first light I am going to talk about here is an AD300 Pro with a strip box on there which actually has a grid fitted. Now I've actually feathered this light away across the top of the bottle to get this beautiful line of light across the front of the bottle which helps to outline the frame and show some of the shape in the frame. Now I had to be careful not to add too much light in this instance because I didn't want it to overwhelm the glass or light the whiskey up too much which would take away from the bottle. Now the second light which you can see just to the left hand side of the bottle on this frame is actually a Godox V1 speed light. Now I've got this fitted with the RK1 kit from Godox and I'm using the optical snoot and in front of that I've got diffusion paper from Lee Filters. What that does, the snoot is going to provide a nice shallow pool of light and then adding that filter in front of the light is just going to soften it ever so slightly. Now what I wanted to do with this light is just to outline the ribs on the side of that bottle just again to allude to the shape of the bottle while not adding too much light through the back of the bottle because I didn't want to shine through and bring out the colour of the whisky too much. I wanted to maintain as much of that blue light or the blue glass as possible. Now for the third light, I'm using the AD200 Pro, which is set at the back of my frame. Now I've got in front of this an orange, a CTO gel, and a diffusion paper. Now what that's going to do is add a beautiful warmth through the image, but also soften that light through that diffusion paper, which you can see pulling from the back of the image to the front, which helps give it that warmth and a little bit of separation because the other lights are in much cooler temperature. And then the fourth and final light in this shot is another strip box, but this time it's a very low power acting as a fill light. Now, one other thing I always say about lighting, it's not about the light you add, but the shadows you create from that light. And in this instance, I didn't want to have two hard shadows. So what I did, I added this fill light in there just to lift the shadows ever so slightly, 
but also provide a little bit of detail on the left hand side of the bottle which allowed me to get this beautiful shape. Now I'm not a big fan of having empty frames and I like to fill it up to make it look more natural. So what I did piece by piece, I added the plant in the background, I added some extra ice in the front, which incidentally is fake ice I bought from Amazon, I've linked that below. I also added the weighing spoons and then the final addition was actually that metallic bottle in the background with very little light hitting it, but just a hint that something is there rather than having a totally black background. Now I shot this frame using high speed sync, which means I can use a much shallower aperture to get that beautiful shallow depth of field in the frame rather than having everything really sharp from front to back. Now for the second shot of this three shot series, I wanted to go for something a little bit different that I wouldn't usually shoot. As I said in the intro, I was a bit inspired by some of the cosmetic shots you see these days for aftershaves and perfumes. So what I wanted to get was that hero angle, which is why you'll see me shooting down from the floor. I mean, in hindsight, I could have put a bigger table there to make it a bit easier, but shooting down from the floor up onto the product to get a really strong hero angle. Now, all I did to create this set as such is to get a cardboard box, put a bit of light blue card on the front of it and tape it on, and then clamp a couple of bits of darker card in the background on a C-stand. And that allowed me this tiny little set to get the shot I wanted. Now, originally when I set this shot up, before I started taking test shots, I had four lights in the frame, but opted to just use three in the end, and I'll tell you why in a moment. But for the first light, as you can see on the right hand side of this frame, I used the line card, a strip box on an AD300 Pro. And this was feathered across the front of the bottle. And the idea with this light was to pick up the label, pick up the white text on there, and just give it a nice solid finish to make it much easier to pick out in the final shot. The second light was very similar, but set a little bit further back on the left hand side of the frame as you look at this. And it was actually lighting part of the background, but also the side of the bottom. And this allowed us to get a little bit of separation from the background without making it too obvious. The third light, again, I'm using the Godox V1 speed light fitted with the optical snoot. And this is quite high up above the shot pointing directly down into the glass of whiskey. Now, as you can see from the finished shot, I've got the product slightly overlapped the front of the frame. And I must admit, I've seen this on someone else's shot and thought it looked fantastic, where you can see the whiskey just spilling over the edge of that frame and the light cascading down onto the front of the panel. So I wanted to use that same type of finish on there to get that shot. Now, when I said I was gonna have a fourth light, I actually set my AD200 probe in the background just behind the bottle with a MagMod grid attached. Now, originally what I had in mind for this is to shoot through the bottle to give it more illumination, but actually what I found in doing this, it didn't give me as clean a shot and as clean a finish. And I actually lost that beautiful effect across the front of the bottle. So I quickly took this fourth light out because actually what I wanted was a nice flat, even finish across the front of the bottle. And it added to the effect of that nice flat panel on the bottom, the nice flat bottle, and then the nice flat background in the rear. And that's what I used to light that shot. Now in this instance, I used standard sync speeds rather than high speed sync because I wanted this image quite sharp from front to back and also have the majority of the bottle and the glass in focus. And for the third and final image, actually the most simple one in terms of lighting was actually the hardest one to set up. Now in this image, I was using real ice, so I had a little bit of a time constraint, or so I thought. Now in terms of lighting for this image, I started with four lights. Again, using the strip boxes, I set these up either side of the box containing the ice, feathered across the front of the image. And what I didn't want to do is light the ice underneath the glass. All I wanted to do was almost cross the light across the front of the bowl so I could pick up the detail, get a nice highlight down the side of each side of the bowl, and it would give us a nice even finish. What I found is though, I didn't actually like that in the end. So I took the one on the left hand side of the bottle away, kept the one on the right, and this gave me a nice fall off of light across the bottle, a little bit subtle. You can't really see it too much, but you can see just how we got that light strip down the edge of the right hand side of the bottle and not the left. Now what I had in mind, as I said in my intro for this shot, is to make it really bright, really colorful using the leaf filters colored gels. So what I did, I set these up on opposite sides of the shot, almost in a diagonal angle, one with pink, one with blue, and doing this, adopting the color wheel principles of opposite to tracks. And again with this, what I wanted to do was create this nice big impact from the color. 
Now what the soft box was always going to do in this frame was maintain the colour integrity on the front of the bottle. It was set at a slightly higher power than my colour gels, so it overpowered that where it hit. But as you can see with the pinks and the blues, they settle on that ice brilliantly and give me a really, really nice colourful finish. Now what I didn't anticipate is this ice didn't actually melt. I left it in there for about 45 minutes and it was still rock hard and actually stuck to the bottom in the end. So I probably could have took a little bit longer to shoot this image, but in all honesty, I got the shot I wanted within two or three frames. So I hope you've enjoyed that video. If you do have any questions, please drop them in the comments below. And don't forget to visit the links below where I detail all of the lighting and equipment that I use, as well as a discount code for both my friends at Link Carter and Leaf Filters for people in the UK. Don't forget to subscribe before you leave and leave a big thumbs up. And thank you very much for watching. Should we know what I'm gonna say before I start, shouldn't I? Hi guys, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to shoot one bottle of whiskey. I need another intro rather than hi guys. Today I'm going to show you how to shoot three. No, I'm not. Today I'm going to show you. <laughs> but, pardon me. In this video, I'm going to show you how to shoot one bottle of whiskey in three. I need the bottle of whiskey actually. Should I have a glass of whiskey and have a drink of it at the end? In this video, I'm going to show you how to shoot this bottle of whiskey. Maybe not shake it like that. <laughs> in this video, I'm going to show you. <laughs> In this video, I'm going to show you how to shoot the 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 It's me, hello, guys. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to shoot this bottle. I can't stop laughing now. In this video, I'm going to show you how to shoot this. Why can't I say this bottle? In this video, I'm going to show you how to shoot this bottle of whiskey in three entirely different ways using artificial light from Gox.